So for more, I'm joined now by Otago University International Relations uh, Professor Robert Patman. Uh, morena, Professor. Uh, lovely morena. to see you, and thank you for being with us um, this you. morning. Let, let's start off with what the impacts uh, that these Houthi strikes are having on the region. Well, quite considerable. Um, it, it, these strikes have been going on since about the 19th of November last year, more than 31 so far, and they have resulted in retaliation by the US and UK supported by New Zealand. Um, and uh, so we have tit for tat exchanges. There's always the prospect of miscalculation in that context. The objective of the Houthis seems to be the large objective in targeting vessels which are said yeah. to be linked or perceived to be linked with Israel seems to be to increase the price of oil. That is to say, to completely disrupt trade in the Red Sea passageway. Um, and already there has been a 1% increase in the price of oil. Why do the Houthis want to increase the price of oil? Because it will put pressure on uh, the United States, the Biden administration, uh, to move towards a ceasefire, which so far they have resisted in the Gaza conflict. Um, Mr. Biden faces, faces uh, a re-election a year, of course, and so the rising price of oil, uh, which has begun to rise and looks like it's going to continue to rise, uh, would not be a good look for Mr. Biden going into an election year. Yeah, so can we can we talk about the US's response to those attacks that the Houthi are having on shipping in the Red Sea? There have been no casualties. Um, but again, it hasn't stopped the US and the UK from counterattacks. President Biden says this is direct response to the attacks on the ships in the Red Sea. UK PM Rishi Sunak says the action was necessary and proportionate to protect global shipping. So how has the response, their response in particular, been seen by the rest of the world? Well, I think that's the problem um, because many people in the region and outside believe the, the, the United States is responding to the symptoms rather than the cause of the problem. Mm. Um, the problem that's really driving escalation in the region is the unrelenting Israeli assault on Gaza since uh, the appalling uh, Hamas terrorist attack of the 7th of October. Um, in the three months since Israel launched that relentless bombardment and ground incursion, more than 24,000 Palestinians have died, 70% of whom are women and children. This is causing strong feelings around the world, not least because the UN Security Council, the international institution responsible for maintaining peace and security, has been paralysed by the casting of three vetoes by the United States. So while America is saying it wants to de-escalate the conflict, its actions point in another direction. It continues to generously arm Israel. I want to bring in uh, New Zealand's part in this and the support that they have for those uh, US attacks. But before we do that, um, I, I want to talk about US relations uh, with Iran, because given Iran supports or funds the Houthi, I can't imagine this is good for the existing tension that exists between the US and Iran at the moment. No, it's not good. I think both mm. sides, Jenny, may want to avoid direct confrontation, and both have indicated they want to see the temperature go down regionally. Um, but the thing is that Iran has capitalised on the fact that the United States is supporting um, what is seen as a disproportionate response yeah. to the Hamas terrorist attack and killing many people which had no connection whatsoever with the terrorist attacks. More than 10,000 ch Palestinian children have been killed since the 7th of October. And that enrages many people. Now, the the Iranians have capitalised on that sense of outrage and in particular exploited the uh, the, the uh, passivity of the Arab states. The Arab states don't like what's going on, many of them, but they haven't done anything. And Iran has filled that void by presenting itself uh, as a resisting the uh, the conflict in Gaza by, taking, by empowering its allies, the Houthis, to take this action. So, I, I mean, the problem is that while both sides, Iran and its allies and the United States on the other, want to avoid direct conflict, it's easy to miscalculate in this situation. Things could get out of hand. The worrying thing from the American point of view is despite robust retaliation against the Houthi attacks, it doesn't seem to be deterring the Houthis who are continuing. Mm. 
Professor Patman, uh, just finally to, to uh, wrap things up, where does New Zealand come into this picture and what does our backing of the US lead strike say about uh, our stand on Israel's war on Gaza? I think, the, I think New Zealand needs to think through its position at, mo at the moment is contradictory. On the one hand, we did the right thing, I believe, in the UN General Assembly on two occasions by vi voting for an immediate humanitarian truce on the 27th of October and on the 13th of December last year. But on the other hand, by supporting uh, these strikes, we are supporting the United States and the UK, which have been blocking a ceasefire, which we've been actually diplomatically demanding. Mm. So it's a bit of a contradictory position. And I think uh, the other thing is that many people are dismayed that New Zealand um, has not taken a, a stronger stand on this issue publicly. We should perhaps be asking the United States to rethink its position um, with regards. This is not a question of giving in to the Houthis. It's a question of doing the right thing. And many people have been worried that the United States is party to the breaking of humanitarian law uh, in the Gaza conflict. And of course, as a relatively small player, New Zealand has a huge stake mm. in a rules-based order. And we should be perhaps speaking out more firmly to protect our interests in this regard. Professor, uh, it is always uh, wonderful to have you on the programme. And thank you so thank much you. for your insights. Uh, we always appreciate you, Professor Robert Patman, joining us this morning. Tēnā koe. Thank you.